Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority, 630. So you Hey, 38 on WML. Larry Kudlow's here, host of the Kudlow Report. You can see him every weekday night, 7 o'clock on CNBC, and host of the Larry Kudlow Radio Show, 7 o'clock on Saturday nights, right here on 630 WML. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, good morning. Well, I saw your interview with Austin Goolsby a couple of weeks ago, and the man who is replacing him now is Princeton professor Alan Kruger, who, you know, find out his... Um, well, it was in favor of a VAT tax, apparently. It was into cap and trade. It's not exactly the type of person that I would think a supply sider would want uh, whispering into President Obama's ear. I was hoping for Art Laffer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was going to happen. No wow. such luck. We could all dream. I was hoping for Larry Kudlow, actually. Yeah, and, and my second choice was Robert Mundell, and my third choice was the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> but alas, we didn't get that. We got another big government pro-stimulus activist guy i don't you know mr kruger i don't believe i've ever met him he's a very well credentialed uh ivy league economist and yeah cash for clunkers that just about sums it up we got ourselves a clunker here that's about all i can say so is this a sign of what to expect from the president moving well, forward that it's more of the same yeah that's that's kind of my surmise that this uh breathlessly awaited stimulus package that's coming or jobs package or whatever package is not going to have pro-growth tax reform. It's not going to lower uh, business tax rates or repatriate the foreign earnings of uh, U.S. companies, all of which would add an incentive spark to the economy and would produce better growth. That instead, it's going to be more unemployment benefits, which, by the way, Kruger does a good editorial today. Kruger, at one point in his career, said uh, unemployment benefits keeps unemployment high. It's an incentive not to work, but he's given that up. He recanted on that, just like Larry Summers mm. recanted on mm. that. So you're going to have more unemployment uh, benefits, which is going to keep the unemployment rate high. One of these temporary payroll tax cuts, which doesn't count because it's temporary, right. it hasn't worked, it never really does. Um, lots of infrastructure spending. I think the infrastructure yeah. bank. Watch Obama try to hook infrastructure bank stimulus spending to Irene. Yeah. You watch that. It's good coming. <laughs> uh, and, FEMA, and FEMA, another big winner out there. You just wait for that to come, too. So, no, I think this is going to be hugely disappointing and bad. Why well, don't I say disappointing? I'm not disappointed. I expect this. <laughs> Larry, yesterday, uh, Jake Carney in the White House press uh, briefing room was questioned pretty sharply by reporters about where the president is on his so-called plan. We know he's got one coming. Well, apparently, even at this late hour, uh, he is still having conversations and meetings. He has not completed that process. He goes on to say the process continues. And then Carney says, and I don't really have any specifics for you at this hour. It sounds like they're still casting about to try to figure out what their plan is. Well, I don't know where they are. It's a process. I don't begrudge them the extra time. I've been there myself. These things can last a while. It's the product that counts, not the process. And I don't have any expectations about the product at all. What I like is, incidentally, and uh, Eric Cantor put out a memo yesterday, the House Majority Leader, and the Republicans have uh, very strong um, regulatory freeze legislation. I'm not exactly sure what the vehicle is, but they want to roll back the EPA assault on uh, electricity and coal companies, and they want to roll back the National Labor Relations Board assault on Boeing. And I think they also want to roll back some health care uh, legislation. Now, that kind of regulatory relief would help the economy to grow. Obama came out with his regulatory plan, what was it, last week? It was a big zero. They hardly did anything. And they didn't tackle the big issues uh, on energy, uh, on the labor and the war against business, and on health care. Those are the obstacles to economic growth. So the Canner plan on regulations, I think, is quite good, and I hope the House Republicans follow through on that. That is a pro-growth measure that business wants. Uh, Larry, we've been having the discussion all week about whether the hurricane is good for the economy or bad for the economy. Yeah. Uh, it can it can become an interesting economic discussion. What's your take on it? Well, I wrote a little column on this. This is the uh, theory of broken windows. Right. All right. You break a window, you fix a window, but there's no net gain to the economy. Don't kid yourself. You got all these demand side Keynesians saying, oh, well, we're going to repair the window. So that's going to stimulate the economy. No, you lose. You know, Irene had a lot of damage. I mean, the flooding damage, the infrastructure damage, 
Uh, people didn't go to work for a couple of days over the weekend. The stores were uh, empty and so forth. You'll recoup that fairly quickly. Okay, that's what happens in a free market economy. But I invoked the um, broken windows law of the old French uh, economist uh, Frederick Bastiat, 1850, wrote this thing. A lot of conservatives use it down through the years. You know, if the if the businessman whose shop's window was busted. He has to pay to fix the window. Now, that does hire the window glazier or whoever else goes in to fix the windows, right? But he can't spend or invest new money in new ventures. His money is tied up in fixing the window. So the idea that this is going to stimulate the economy is incorrect. It gets you back to even, all right, but it doesn't break any new ground. And if this economy needs anything, we need to break new investment ground. That's what we're not doing. We need to you know, create new business ground. We need to create new small business startups and so forth and so on. So Irene doesn't do that, and anybody that tells you it will is absolutely wrong. It just means, you know, you see people getting hired uh, to fix the roads, for example, or fix the houses. I mean, we had a lot of damage in our place in Connecticut, huge damage. And, yeah, but... That just means that I'm out of pocket, the expenses, right. and that means some insurance company is out of pocket, and the insurance company may have to raise its insurance rates, by the way. So I take it you're not writing the Irene section of Obama's speech. No, I mean, it's just, yeah, look, Irene's a tragedy, and, and yeah. I, I, I think they handle it pretty well. I don't have any criticisms of anything, anybody. Right. It's okay by me. But don't look at to this as a stimulant. A stimulant is when you create an incentive right. at the margin on the extra dollar to go out and do something you wouldn't have ordinarily done. And that's not going to happen with Irene. That happens when you lower marginal tax rates. That happens when right. you roll back uh, regulations. Uh, that could happen, by the way, if you quit borrowing so much money because you're borrowing money that might be used in the private sector. Those are the kinds of things that really affect the growth incentives in a co of an economy, not hurricanes. All right. Larry Kudlow, always good to have you on the program.